welcome. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to talk to you today because I love this time of year and I think that this is one of the most exciting months in the year for students. For some reason, kids just love Halloween. Mm -hmm. So whenever I decided I was going to ask you to be on the podcast, it's because I was looking at some different activities and I stumbled upon your activity that you have where you incorporate writing and have the students write a persuasive essay trying to persuade you to pick a certain costume to dress up as. And I thought it was so fun. And I love how you're incorporating the holiday and the festivities into your day and you're not sacrificing any learning time with just fluff. So I'm so excited that you said yes to come on and you're gonna talk to us about a way to add fun into any month any holiday, but we're specifically going to talk about Halloween since it's October. And you can incorporate that fun into your day without adding any stress or any work for yourself. <laughs> so thanks so much. And let's start by having you introduce yourself. And then you can tell us what exactly is a boogram? Because that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, thank you, Cassie. First, thank you so much for having me. I felt so honored and special that you would want me to talk about what I do with kids. So thank you, thank you. A little bit about me. I was a classroom teacher for 20 years in Connecticut. And most of those years were third grade, but I did teach fourth and fifth for a year each. During that time, I went back to school to become a remedial reading specialist, which I loved because reading in the classroom is totally my thing. I love books. I have a huge picture book collection, kind of nerdy with that. And then I had some children. I stayed home for a little bit. And this year, being in the classroom looks a little bit different because I only work part-time at my school, and I'm a full-time student that went back to school. I am getting my dyslexia certification. I am getting a structured literacy certification and OG trained at the same time. So every day there's college classes. I have to work with small group. I'm back to getting observed multiple times a week. It's a lot of work, which I love because I love staying busy. And then, of course, on top of that, I am a mom, a wife, and I run my TBT shop. So I'm always doing something, whether I'm at school or home. So I just love staying busy. <laughs> when do you breathe? <laughs> now? <laughs> You're like, okay, I'm going to incorporate a shower and a breathing <laughs> into one time. Now we have to be scheduled. <laughs> Definitely. Set the timer for three minutes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. So you know what it's like to be busy mm -hmm. as do pretty much every teacher. And sometimes holiday activities, they just can feel like one more thing that you got to do. You are scrambling at the last minute to think of something. And I love this fun idea that you have. Okay. So yeah, I agree. I was always into celebrating the holidays and especially as a third grade teacher, I always felt like the kids coming up from kindergarten first and second, they just did everything with holidays. And when they came to third grade, it was a little bit more serious and a lot more work and they were looking for fun holiday things, which is why I love to tie the holidays into everything. So the Boo Grams actually started off being called Ghost Grams and the kids changed it over time to call them Boo Grams. And I think they changed it because being booed was like a thing in neighborhoods and classrooms and teachers. So they started calling them Boo Grams. But essentially what it is <clears throat> is just a friendly letter written to another student in the class that celebrates that person as an individual. So I've used them every single month with different holidays or themes or seasons as a way to promote kindness, because kindness is like a really big thing with me, and build classroom community. But it's really low stress because you're not just stopping everything to do a holiday activity. It ties in writing, it ties in SEL, kindness, and even handwriting, like the joy of writing a letter and receiving a letter. So there's so much goodness with it, which is why I love them. Oh, great. So basically, I had no idea what you were going to say here. All <laughs> I could picture was my neighborhood has done some boo grams. I've, I've seen people 
you know, putting something on someone's door, bottle of wine or something like that. Um, so I assumed it was something like that, but a friendly letter is so much better. I'm just imagining a little postcard with a, with a cute picture on it that a kid, you know, surprises another kid with mm-hmm. and guess who gave it to you, but writing a letter, I love that. So what, what sort of things are kids writing in the letters to each other? Okay. So since I do do this every month, the first time there is is a little lesson that goes with it, because if there's no lesson that explains the purpose or why we're doing this, everyone will just write, dear Jack, I like you because you're nice or something like that. So we spend a lot of time talking about what would make a good specific letter to somebody else that would boost their self-esteem and make them feel good about themselves. So we talk about including like a memory or a specific event. Maybe that person helped you with something or they're on your soccer team or they were in your class last year. So we talk a lot about that and we tie in character traits. And to do that, I model it by writing the first boo gram for my teacher friend across the hall. And we spend a lot of time on that about how she helps me with plan lessons or come up with activities or watches them when I run to the bathroom, which they know because I'm always running out the door. And once we've done that, then they have a turn to write. Um, So I do, I have a quick example of this. This is the one that I use. So it's just, they fill this up with character traits and positive words that describe the kids. And then they write the letter on the inside. And do you want me to talk about how that works? Well, yeah, but first off, that's super, that's super cute and super simple. So if you're not watching, if you're just listening, she just had a piece of paper that's printed on orange cardstock. It looked like folded in half. And on the front cover was a simple outline of a ghost and the inside was just blank. So it literally is a piece of paper with a little picture on it folded in half. So And you can use blank and just have the kids decorate the front. That's why this is like really low prep, like The only prep would be doing that initial lesson, showing them what would make a good friendly letter. I've done it on lined paper too, but I mean, you could do anything or if you're going to do it every month, you can change it up too. So my first question that I'm I'm thinking, I guess, as a teacher that has done activities similar to this before, how do you keep one kid from getting 10 letters from their friends and one kid from getting no letters. Okay, so that's the, the the building community aspect. So before we do this, the kids have to write their name on a small piece of paper and they fold it into fourths so everybody looks the same. Then I come around and collect them and so everybody's name is in a bowl. Then one person at a time picks the name. And the only time they're allowed to put it back is if they pick themselves. But I tell them, you're going to show me your name on the piece of paper. You can't just put it back because you don't know that person or it's a boy and you're a girl, vice versa. So they walk around to the closets, they open it up, they see it's not them. And if it is, they have to show me. And sometimes that happens, like it's legit. And then they go back to their seat and start their letter. So every single person is getting somebody else. So everyone walks away with a letter at the end. Oh, I love the SEL component of that too. And just making sure that if you are disappointed in who you picked, Mm. that you don't show it. (laughs) And I I always say, don't make eye contact. They're like walking back to their seats, trying not to look at the person or smile or frown. They, They get really into it. Yes, I love that. It makes it a safe place to be able to show your appreciation or your friendship to somebody that you might not normally feel comfortable doing. Exactly. exactly. It reminds me of in back in the day when I was a kid, we would do something similar at Valentine's Day. And there was always some people that you felt really comfortable giving to your best friends. Mm-hmm. And then there was the crush or somebody that you're really hoping you can give something to. And then there's the people that you just wouldn't want to because you feel like you don't know them at all. But that's life. There's people in your life that you don't know because you haven't had the opportunity to get to know them and you haven't had anything, any connections that you know of so far. So doing something like this makes it a safe way to meet somebody else because you're not picking that person. You're Mm -hmm. 
essentially being assigned to that yes, you are being assigned yes it's but it's the best way to include everyone and like you said i've seen over the years people who were not friendly or didn't sit together at lunch or recess or whatever became friends because now they had this little memento from them and then the more we do it over the year they get more excited to write it and they'll say, oh, what if we pick someone we already wrote to? I said, well, that's OK. It doesn't happen all the time. But then they even become better friends and their letters are different. So it just always works out. And kids always come back and say, oh, I still have my boot gram hanging in my class in my bedroom or whatever. So it's really a memorable way. Yes, to and those, those types of assignments, too, those are very meaningful to the parents mm -hmm. when they bring them home in their Tuesday folder or whatever. As a parent, when I would read things that other people wrote to my students, especially things that are designed to, to speak to the best parts of them or something amazing about them, it just touches your heart because you see your child in a different way mm -hmm. and you get to see them through someone else's eyes. And so it means a lot to get these letters and it means a lot to send letters like this. Mm -hmm. I love that you're making it normal by doing it every single month. Yep. Yeah, we do something similar during the week of Christmas. We don't really celebrate Christmas, um, but we do something similar where they write a letter one day, they draw a picture another day and put all different character traits. And then they have to sit next to that person at lunchtime, which at first they'd be like, oh, no, no, no. But they get so into it. It really makes our community in the classroom feel smaller. Even if we have 25 or 26 kids, it makes it just feel like a little family. And it's just really, it's a lot of fun. And sometimes I put my name in the bucket because I want to get a positive letter about myself too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're going to get all those letters with kids trying to uh, <laughs> to encourage you to dress up as their favorite costume yes, and then yes. you can get all the letters. <laughs> the kids telling you all the reasons that they love you so much. I love the idea too of going outside of your classroom community into your school community mm -hmm. and trying to, maybe you could start something up in your school to where teachers are doing this with each other. Because I know as a teacher, I was really close to my other fourth grade teacher teamies, mm -hmm. but I didn't know the second grade teachers or you know a lot of the third grade teachers and doing some kind of school-wide boo gram that's more than just you know here's a little postcard that says boo and maybe a a coke or something like yeah. that not necessarily a gift but more of an a letter of encouragement or something or a foot in the door to get to know each other oh i like that idea a lot i know is that some schools will do like secret santas and and then do mm -hmm. like a secret we used to do also a secret cupid at my school but i like the idea of it being more than just a token like here's a pair of valentine's day socks or whatever i like the idea of writing a letter get to know each other or an invitation to meet up that's a cool idea yeah an invitation to meet up would be so great because it would be hard to write a letter to another teacher that you don't know very well, mm -hmm. but that's exactly how the student feels when they're, when they've drawn that girl <laughs> that they never, you know, Not that girl in the class with don't know, what is she like? It is, I will say that October is the first one we do of the year and it is the most challenging because they don't know each other as well. They don't have as many memories. And like when, by the time we get to April or May, they can say, oh, I, remember we did that math project together or remember that time in gym they have more to draw on. So I totally, totally get that. And it's the same for us as adults. So I heard you speak a lot about the, the lesson preparations, but you talked mostly about the social and emotional learning side of it. Mm -hmm. What kind of academic teaching goes into this before you say, okay, get started? As far as writing the letter and such? Yes. Do you turn it into an actual friendly letter with a heading and a closing? Yes. And yes. That's what I model it with. Sometimes I do have like just an example. Sometimes I will have them follow like an actual friendly letter format. And sometimes we'll do more of like the open-ended card. So we do talk about a friendly letter. I have an anchor chart that has all the components of a friendly letter, why we would write it, how it would be different than a business letter. We don't really get into the business letter too much, just kind of talking about the difference. And then I 
jot down everybody's ideas for the friendly letter that I'm going to write to my colleague. And then we take those ideas from like a graphic organizer and actually write it out. So it would be like a real writing lesson, talking about the structure and all of that as far as specific words and character traits we touch on as well. So that would be really the only prep because then they go off and they work. And like I said, you could just use a regular piece of paper. Do you have them work through the writing process and do revision, editing, and final drafts? Or do you just let them be more for fun? I've done both, especially at the beginning of the year. I do all the reminders of check for capitals, check for periods, like not nitty gritty. Did you spell, you know, funny with a Y or an E, like not all of that, but I do expect the structure there, capitals, periods, commas, the date, all of that. And then just as time goes on through natural writing instruction, their letters, and like I said, in April and May are so well crafted versus the Halloween one, which like you said, is a little bit more fun because it's more of the introduction and the first one that they write. Do you ever have any kids just saving them? Like, you know, sometimes when you have like desk clean out and you're like pulling out their oh, pencil they box. Always and save it. They always save it. In their catch up folder, they're always there hiding. For Thanksgiving time, we do one that's like in the shape of a corn and it's like your friendship is not corny. And I can see those in their folders like sticking out. They love them. They save them. Oh, what a good gift you could. If you did this for every holiday all year long at the end of the year, you could put them all together into a little book. And I have thought book. about that, but they don't want to give them to me. They want to keep them. <laughs> yes, it, it is much more special to have it and to get to read it throughout the year than to have it sitting in a filing cabinet waiting. Yeah. <laughs> so fun. Okay, so you have lots of good ideas. So I'm going to give you a minute to share if you have any other ideas. So basically we are a week away from Halloween. Mm -hmm. And if a teacher has not prepared and she's scrambling to figure out something to do, you have a couple of really great ideas that we already talked about, your uh, persuasive letter, your boo grams. Is there any other fun things that you could suggest that are low prep, but lots of fun? Low prep. Okay. Well, I just started actually playing this at school this week with the kids during downtime. So instead of playing like hangman, every month we play something that is related to whatever the season is. So this week we started build a jack-o'-lantern and whatever words, so instead of hanging the man, <laughs> we build a jack-o'-lantern. So I win essentially if the whole jack-o'-lantern is drawn and we just do it under the Elmo on a piece of paper. So it's really low key, but we use the content words that we're learning. So we were working on digraphs and tri-blends. So every word had one of those and we were just doing it time after time after time. And it was a great time filler, but I think it would also be a really great like party idea after you read a book, like a Halloween chapter book or picture book, you can just pull words from there to see who is listening and do the build a jack-o'-lantern. My first year teaching, my principal, I worked at three different schools and my first year was, I was only there one year. My principal did not allow any photocopies, no worksheets. So if you were, if she walked in your classroom, there were no dittos allowed. It had to be made from regular paper, construction paper, or in a notebook. So I came up with a lot of <laughs> creative ways to do things. And the same thing with the boo grams, just use a piece of paper. Like I can use a piece of paper a million different ways. But yeah, they love the build -a. We do build a snowman in the winter, build Santa. You could come up with anything. And it's a really great way to just review whatever you're teaching, but you don't need anything. Oh, I love that. You could also use the build a pumpkin or something just for classroom management. Just have your big pumpkin. And then if anytime the students are be are being very good, you can give the an eye or something. Like yes, that. that's a good idea. There's so many ways. If you're just a little bit creative, you can push the holidays into your regular day and not sacrifice any learning time at all. And okay. books too. Like you can just go to your school library, borrow a holiday or a seasonal themed picture book and do anything. Same thing with a piece of paper. You can draw the character in a different scene. We play a game called name that scene. So if we read a chapter in like small groups chapter book, 
after we read the chapter, instead of summarizing it or having them write something, I give them a small square of paper, they sketch something that was important, and then we all have to name that scene. So it's really easy to do that with a holiday picture book too. <laughs> yeah, those scenes are gonna have haunted houses. You know. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to end with a little game where I'm going to ask you, what okay. is scarier? Okay. So I'm going to read through two different things and you decide as a teacher which one is scarier. Okay. Okay. Getting a surprise observation on Halloween day oh or getting one the day after Halloween. Okay, on Halloween or the day after, I'm going to go with the day after that would be scarier because i feel like who knows who's going to show up they'll probably be half asleep or high on sugar so i would not want to deal with all of that i would much rather have it be on halloween and like use their excitement um to build the lesson <laughs> me too the day after halloween you cannot get the kids to even wake up you don't you don't want that for your observation <laughs> okay what's scarier getting rained on during recess duty or finding out you have an unplanned staff meeting after school unplanned staff meeting after school for sure my last school all our staff meetings were in the morning and it was the best thing ever so that you didn't have to go sit there after teaching <laughs> we didn't have things like that very often but i do remember once or twice having something surprise and just being like what do we do with our kids <laughs> We have to go pick up our kids from school or things like that. Okay. Um, what about having all the parents show up during the class party, all of them, or having no parents show up? Scarier would probably be all of them. There's no room in our classroom for everyone. <laughs> it, it turns into 20 mini conferences yep. instead of a party. <laughs> or they're talking while you're trying to give directions. <laughs> Agree. Okay. Realizing you need two more grades and report cards are due tomorrow or realizing you have enough grades, but you haven't graded any of it. I'm needing to work grades, definitely, because I need the kids for that. The grading I could do at home if I had to stay up all night. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how many things became a daily double. <laughs> oh, that's clever. <laughs> the day before report cards are due or all of a sudden there's a notebook check. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or when the student is absent so much and you have nothing for them, you're like going through their desk. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Those are the times where I'm always like, why am I not more organized? Yeah. Why am I not more <laughs> type A? Why am I a type B? Okay. How about the kids' lunch on Halloween day or their lunch the day after Halloween? The day after for sure. Definitely. You, mean, you mean their candy box? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay. How about dealing with a major behavior issue during an observation or having none of your students respond to any of your questions during an observation? Oh. Both would be tricky, but one year I had a principal who said, if they know the right answer, tell them to raise their right hand. If they don't know the answer, tell them to raise their left hand so that everybody always looked like they were participating, but you could just call like the same two or three with their right hand raised. So <laughs> I've used that before with certain groups of kids, but uh, I would say scarier would be the, the one behavior problem. Oh, that's a life hack for teachers. <laughs> Write that down, y'all. <laughs> okay, last one. Having an unexpected absence that you have to prepare for mm. or having to take your coworker students because they have an unexpected absence. Uh, well, I stress out about being absent a lot. So I'll say for me, it's the unprepared absence. Definitely. The more, the merrier. I've done that before and it's fine. Um, but definitely I don't like being out, excuse me, unplanned and unprepared. <laughs> me, me neither. That's another one of the times where I'm like, why am I not attacking? <laughs> 
Like, why do I not have these sub plans that, yeah. that I see for sale everywhere? I should just buy some and have them on hand. Like, why? <laughs> Uh, oh, that's so true. Yeah. That is so true. And then I'm calling my teacher friends later, like thanking them for taking my class because if we wouldn't get a sub, if we waited, if we had a last second absent, like we wake up and our kid has a fever or something like that. Damn. I mean, you just you don't get a sub. Your your friends have a hard day because you took the day off. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> or if you have to just leave in the middle of the day, like if you have a toothache or something like that, and you literally have to like leave. Wow, uh, one time I had to leave because uh, I guess it was lunchtime and I opened up my Facebook just to scroll and my neighborhood face group, group popped up and someone had posted a picture of my dog in the street <laughs> saying like, <laughs> someone's dog got out. I was like, I cannot just, I can't just leave my dog out all day. So <laughs> I left and had to take like an, an hour to save my dog. Oh, well, at least you were able to go back. <laughs> Yes. Luckily, I live in a neighborhood school and it's it's only a five minute drive. But right. still. <laughs> well, thank you so much thank for coming you. and talking thank to you. us today. Thank you. I love your ideas. I love talking to you. You're so fun. And you. Uh, you seem like you would be such an amazing teacher for your students. I love that you really care about teaching them kindness and teaching them to be better people. And, you know, that's really what we want out of out of children. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. It was so nice to be here and chat with you too. So if people want to follow you or find you or even purchase some of your Halloween activities, where can they do that? Um, well, everything is Think Grow Giggle. That's my blog is Think Grow Giggle, Instagram and TPT as well. It's all the same. Mm -hmm. All right, go find her and follow her. You will not be sorry. We'll put it in the show notes too so that people can access it easily. Okay. So thank you again. And I hope that you have an amazing holiday. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to get all treats. You know? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Bye. Bye.